and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 226. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Hello there, people of the interwebs. Hello, Wills. How are you doing? I'm doing splendiferous. Any <laughs> reason with the voice? What voice? This is how I naturally sound. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess for this week is... Shut the shade. Hi. Hey there, man. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> wow, everybody has a wacky cookie intro except me. That just sets you apart from the rest of us. <clears throat> Yay, I'm boring. Uh, so, how is everyone? Uh, I cried today. Oh, wow. <laughs> Any reason why? Um, I blame the new episode. Oh, uh, yeah. That episode was not bad. Oh man, hit me right in the feels. Really hard, like like a freight train hitting a feels truck. That's a that's an analogy. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll take that for a dollar. Uh, personally, I just uh, loved all the little changeling info we got. I mean, didn't get as much as I wanted, but I mean, just the little bits and pieces here. Plus, we get to see what baby changelings look like, and they're adorable. I know. Oh, aren't you an adorable little abomination? I they know. are. Uh, they're so good. There's so many things that comes up in my head. Like, uh, you know what? It's not that kind of episode, so I'm not going to talk about it that much. Except for I like it. Yeah. Although it does make me think, okay, <laughs> if we now know what baby changelings look like, what do teenage changelings look like? Mom, I'm molting. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> uh, those times are not fun for Chrysalis. Oh, but anyway, before we officially start, I need to ask the four important questions to shade here. So, okay. question number one is, favorite character? Oh boy, my favorite character is Applejack. Oh, any reason why? I guess it's the whole um, honesty aspect, because when everyone else is panicking, she brings a nice black and white to it that really kind of fixes the situation for me. I, I don't know. It just... I don't know. All right, it's understandable. Applejack is always a nice, honest one, and she's always the more well-rounded character out of them. Yeah. And favorite episode? Favorite episode. I was actually thinking about this the other day. <laughs> um, it was a it was a hard contest between either um the uh, what's called nope that's not it um the first Cutie Mark episode in season two um. There's a singing one, if I remember right. Uh, no, not singing one. It's Fl- um, uh, Flutter Wonder, or the Wonder Song is in that one. The Wonder Song. I, I forgot. Uh, like, we really should open the wiki beforehand. Like get this all prepared. But yeah. <laughs> uh, but but um, it was either that one or Luna's Eclipse. Luna Eclipse. Those are two. Um, the first one, Luna comes back and everyone's just scared of her. Th- those those are really old ones. Yes, uh, I am quite a fan of the older things in this uh, entirety of the show, really. All right, it's cool, it's cool. And how did you become a fan of the show? Um, I was on, I was just playing some games with some friends, and a friend of mine was like, hey, you should watch the first episode of My Little Pony, and I was just, I thought to myself, why? <laughs> so there had to have been a catch, so I decided to, and uh, I don't regret anything. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's good. When someone asks you to watch something, it's always good or bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. you have to decide on that one. Well, at that point in time, I was like, my friend is like 20-something, and he's asking me to watch My Little Pony. There has to be something to it. <laughs> and there was. And I've been here for five years. <laughs> Yay, that's good. And you can never leave. Yep. I know. <laughs> uh, have you been to any conventions then? I'm working on it. Ah, all right. Then. And the fourth question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? I have family. <laughs> Surprisingly, you do. Um, uh, they they have teased me about it, I'm sure, at some points. I just, I don't care, really. <laughs> it's just a thing I watch, and by now, they they haven't talked about it, so I just kind of, it, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know. Let's go. And thanks for answering the four important questions. Now we can officially start. So, Shade, mind telling the people at home, what do you do in the fandom? 
I, uh, I'm starting to be a musician, slowly but surely. I am working on an album, currently, uh, commemorating five years of past Pony music. Um, it's a cover album. Um, most of the songs will either be straight up covers or they'll be slightly, um, arranged, I suppose, for different piano, various piano arrangements, uh, under my styling. But otherwise, I just, I'm just recording an album currently, and otherwise I'm in a uh, a show entitled The Adventures of Mechabetty. I play a uh, captain of the Eldridge. Uh, what's his name? Why is that escaping me right now? Okay. Uh, captain Yeager? <laughs> yes. Captain Yeager. Captain Yeager. Anyways, uh, that's what I do. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you mentioned, well, you mentioned a few things, but I'm going to harp on the album music thingy that you do. So, yes. you, play mostly pianos here from what I'm seeing on your SoundCloud page. Yeah, I haven't really dove into anything kind of new yet, like as far as instruments go. Um, that and piano is just really easy to compose and record with. Mm. So do you play any other instruments besides the piano? Probably guitar? Um, I, I, I'm learning guitar. I play trombone. Mm -hmm. And uh, my vocal range is, I think, I believe it is a low tenor baritone range. Hey, baritone buddies. <laughs> yeah. welcome, to the, welcome to the range where you can't sing melody. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew what I sing. Uh, every time when I go, terrible. Trust I me. I know. That's what my oh, that's what all my friends tell me. <laughs> uh, they don't want us to be your friends after they say that, though. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. It, it, that's why we don't go to karaoke clubs or bars anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's because you were banned. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons why too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I bought, uh, SingStar on the PS console. <laughs> uh, they're not making that anymore, are they? <laughs> but besides my singing failures, um, you're doing mostly covers, right? Yeah, um, there, I don't really have time to do originals currently, but I, I just kinda wanna go back. Because there's plenty of music from the past that just is so good, and I love it so much. Have you listened to a lot of the music in uh, the fandom? Yeah, I have. In the earlier years, they're really, really good, like Beyond Her Garden. Yeah. Um, that's one thing in my head right now. If I were to check out my playlist, I'm sure there's more than Beyond Her Garden. I know it's proud to be a Bronies one. Uh, let's see. There's a lot, like... My playlist is something recent, so it's not fair. Maybe the Brony Polka would do fine. Yeah, there's also Gypsy Bard. Um, oh yeah, Magic. Yeah, most of the songs, most of okay. the songs I think that that people like the most are the ones that are Pony themed, but they're not using remixes of audio from Ponies. Yeah, the not the instrumental ones, the ones that are actual written out songs. Yeah, like uh twenty percent cooler one? or uh uh swing Tavi swing. I have Octavia one, is a pretty or... recent one that I like. Well that that, that that's a that's a parody, but yeah, but uh, Oh yeah. yeah. Um or, 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 or the Eurobeat one that he hates, uh Discord. Oh yeah. <laughs> now do you hate the do you hate the um tombstone version or the actual like Eurobeat? version oh, oh no, no 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 i'm saying i'm saying he hates it like you know the joke of like he goes to a Convention. he goes to uh, he goes to dj's like play discord <laughs> shut up <laughs> uh, i gotcha yeah two stones kind of regrets doing it but everybody loves it and it kind of steal away from uh euro beats uh, i I personally like Euros more because it's a bit more complex than Tombstones, to me, uh, just in my opinion. So if I did do a cover, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm sure it's, a, it's I'm sure nobody cares. But um, you know, if I were to do a cover of Discord, it'd be the original Eurobeat, mm. and I probably wouldn't try to remix it at all, or like not remix it, arrange it in any different way because it's pretty, pretty solid the way it is. It's very complicated too. It'd be a shame to remix. If you just want to do a solid cover, you can get his um, minus track, minus one track online. I think it's on his official uh, band camp, I think. Okay. He has a whole album. Like I think he has um, the normal song, the minus one, uh, lead sing, background vocals. I mean, it's a whole complete set. Oh, that's great. So it'll be easier for covers to cover them. Yeah. 
Um, anyways, where was I was going off on a tangent and then I stopped. <clears throat> this show is popular for its tangents, so don't mind us. <laughs> Oh, I remember what I was saying. Like, I, I want to make that album because I want to bring people back to the time when they first heard that. When you hear stuff like 20% Cooler, um, it brings a sense of nostalgia. And some of those songs are, I'm not sure. I, I feel like they've been forgotten, but I'm not completely sure. I, I have that feeling too. I mean, when you talk about Brony songs nowadays, nothing really pops up. Like, sure, EQD has its... Um, song selection of the day, and yeah, you can check it out. But I don't know, nothing stands out like the like um, older days. Some of the, oh yeah, absolutely. And and that's that's the thing is maybe if I uh, I'm sure I won't bring up like some kind of some kind of brony music revolution because that's <laughs> it's just a guy doing covers. I mean, <laughs> but um, you know, if I just if I try, maybe people will hear that and be like, hey, that sounds fun. I'm gonna try to actually make. Really cool original music. I'm not saying that people don't know, because I've heard some really interesting songs that have come out. With the newer music now, they don't really catch me like some of the older ones. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just need to spend more time listening to it instead of doing other things. For me, it's just I haven't been really active <laughs> at all, like paying attention to anything in the fandom hardly. It kind of bums me out, because, you know, it, it's a fun show, and it's a fun... Like, all the art and stuff is amazing in the community. Yeah, it's fun and all, Like, but sometimes I feel that we're kind of distracted by other things. Like, once we're too into ponies that much that it gets boring and we try something fresh and new. Like, that one crazy iPhone game or Android game called Pokemon Go, who's still playing that? I have. Yo. Team Mystic. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Team Mystic all the way, man. Brains over brawn. <laughs> I like that. That's great. No, but uh no, I see it more so as I mean, I'm still heavily into pony fic. Uh pony, pony writings like I will check that daily even even now just because I, you know, I love some of the writers and I love reading new stuff and I love seeing people commit the same mistakes over and over <laughs> again and saying, "Wow, at least I write better than this." <laughs> what do you mean? You don't write at all. You haven't updated your story in 6 months. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. To me, like, I still do this because it's fun and all, but sometimes, like, when something new and shiny comes up, I get distracted. Like, Pokemon Go. And talking about Pokemon Go, um, it's kind of related to ponies in some way. Um, there's a Pokestop in Argentina that has a Rainbow Dash graffiti on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yay, that's cool. <laughs> and the title is called Sleepy Horse. <laughs> Could not get more perfect for uh, Dash there. <laughs> Yay. If only, if only they knew. <laughs> oh, well, at least you'll get 20% cooler Pokeballs and whatnot. No, no, yeah. you'll probably just get, like, three Pokeballs <laughs> and one uh, Revive. And you're like, oh, great, a Revive. How often will I actually use this? No, I mean, Revive <laughs> is still good because you get three Pokeballs. The worst is you get three Revives and one Potion. You just get a Revive, oh. one Revive. <laughs> Uh, but still, this looks cool. Um, I know how Pokemon Go works in terms of how stops are created and whatnot, but just to have someone from Ingress play and make that a portal and pop it up into Pokemon Go, that's cool. Well, hey, people who actually do actual art and that, that I mean, graffiti is still graffiti, but it depends yep. on the type, you know. True, art is still art. And talking about art, the art of voice acting, you do it, right, Shutter? Yes, I I, I try. (laughs) Well, it seems that you've succeeded with a few... Well, your season one's done, right? Huh? I'm sorry. Kind of spaced out. (laughs) With your Adventures of Mecha Betty, that's a radio play that you do or that you're participated in, right? Oh, yeah. It's fun. It's really fun. The cast is great. The director is great. Everyone's great. (laughs) So how did you get involved with this one? Um, I had a friend of mine, Fisher, from, uh, he's, he's known quite well around Tumblr, um, Fisher Pone, I think is his Tumblr. Um, but, um, he, he just contacted me one day and said, hey, I have a guy looking for voice actors. And I was like, all right, sign me up. And then we got into contact and we just started talking about characters and stuff. And I got fitted to Captain Yeager. 
And I was very confused at first, because <laughs> I don't feel like my voice type is, you know, the right type for a stern general, but over time, I guess I've, I've done it somehow. So, what's the story about? Can you just um, tell us about it? Um, so it all, it begins at the, uh, World's Fair, a technology event in which, uh, all the greatest minds of the world come together with their technologies to change the future. And in comes Betty and Kenneth. Kenneth is a friend of Betty's and Betty is a, I want to say an at-home scientist. I don't think that makes sense. She, she makes all these brilliant technological breakthroughs, like she makes a super factory and that's what she's bringing to the fair. Upon coming to the fair, they get attacked by aliens. Uh, and now I know you're thinking, oh no, aliens, and that's what I thought too. <laughs> Anyways, um, so they escape from the super factory and lock themselves in a bunker-like thing with all these scientists, and Betty's there, and Betty got shot up because Kenneth thought, hey, I'm just going to stay behind and take pictures. <laughs> you know, he's a photographer. So uh, they put her body into this machine, and she comes out as just this towering mecha woman kind of a thing, mecha Betty, if you will. And from there, it's just a story, at least the first season story, is basically them dealing with this new menace that has come to take over Earth for their own use. And there's plenty of really funny plot moments, good characters, sad moments. Um, it's just overall good writing. I like it a lot. How's the whole process of doing this? Like, uh, besides the whole, you read your lines and send it off, like, is there anything beyond that? Uh, so it takes a couple days. Uh, Titan Core, the uh, the guy directing, uh, sits down and writes out an entire script. Uh, I believe he has help from one of our sound guys and maybe another one of the cast. But um, so they sit down and write the script and bounce it off people and make sure it's all good and stuff. Then uh, they hand the scripts out to all of us, so we have a deadline to record by. We record the lines, we send them in, and then our amazing sound editor, <laughs> Phil, uh, just works, works really hard on it. And he, he, you know, he gives us a really good finished product. And then we take that finished product and post it online for viewers to enjoy, or listeners rather, there's no video. How many hours of recording does it take you to finish your part? Oh boy, about 10 minutes. <laughs> really? I just do a one shot. I don't think I've ever re-recorded anything. And they're happy with it. Huh. Yeah, I I mean, I just, I sit there and I'm like, I'm going to read this line a couple times and go to the next one. I'm sure other people in the cast may record more, but I, <laughs> I record, so I just do one shot and then I'm like, yep, that's probably good. Send it in. <laughs> well, and they're, they're happy with it. Like, yeah, this is good. This I, is good. I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I, I think there's only been one time I've been asked to record something, but that was only because the file was corrupt. Oh, that, that sucks. Yeah, but it, it's fine. Um, and then in between that, I had to take a break because I had some tonsils removed. <laughs> and as an adult, that really sucks. Um, they didn't just take out my tonsils, though. I have no uvula now. Oh, <laughs> uh, so that's fun. Oh, uh, that can be. Fun. But I can, I can breathe better, I guess, which also helps with my uh, vocal and. Uh, voice stuff. So my voice, if you noticed, um, if if you watched the show, I believe it was between, it was either between episode ten point one and ten point two, but um, there's a there might be a change. I haven't really listened closely, close enough. But um, th there's a bit in there where I recorded without tonsils, and I'm not sure if that's like louder or not. I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> trivia. What did the director say? Like, was he worried about the voice change or did you sound the same? Like, he didn't really affect the whole project. You know, for, for a bit we were worried because of the timing, but once, cause in between, it seemed like in between 10.1 and 10.2, there's a lot of writing going on. So I had actually that much time and I recovered fully and that was about a three week oh, thing. It's not that bad. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think if it was three weeks. It was, it was a very long time and it was just, terrible it sucked <laughs> uh no problem then um season one's complete so that's all good yeah we're working on season two very hard getting in some new voices and maybe even some animators yay that's always good when recording all this um what do you use in terms of hardware 
Um, I have a nice blue Yeti microphone and a cord that goes to a computer running Audacity, and that's it. <laughs> oh, very simple. Yes. <laughs> How about the blue Yeti? Still good. It's a good mic. Oh yeah, I'm using it right now. <laughs> hey. And what about? Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's better than using an onboard mic or a simple headset mic. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you have the extra cash, you can go further. But why, right? You would need to get a soundboard. You need to get a soundboard then if you're going to go oh, further. Oh yeah, I mean. Oh yeah. Well, all those are really cool and, and all, but you need to have the knowledge and. Ugh. Well, you can learn how to use them on online. I'm I mean, pretty sure. Difficult. I'm... I'm pretty sure a sound guy could probably nail that because he's he is smart. <laughs> you know stuff about audio that hurts my head. Yeah, the soundboard. If I seen it once, it's like every row is you is one um, input and output. You handle the volume, handle. The... There are much, there are much simpler soundboards, and yeah. really all you need, all you need is a converter. Mm. Because um, a USB mic, it doesn't have the quality that a uh, a full range microphone oh, would. Or the power. I mean, yeah. The, well, well, it just th- there is a gigantic difference in how your voice sounds between the two. Just the reverb and the total uh, range that you can hit. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I mean, it, it, it's qual- it's how much quality you're willing to put into it is is really the deal. Or cash. Usually, it's cash. <laughs> yeah. Well, that too. Uh, the, the problem with being a voice actor is, uh, I'll quote somebody, I, I, uh, somebody here, I can't remember his name, but he says, um, co- voice acting is where you work for work that pays. <laughs> because there's a, gotta have the good stuff in order to actually even have a chance, and it's like, it's difficult. That is also true. Shit, is there anything else that we're missing? Because I think that, uh, besides your album project and this one, there's anything else? Uh, nothing that I'm really working on, uh, past that. I mean, I'm just, right now I'm trying to do balance school work and plays. <laughs> uh-huh. So you're still in the college then? Yeah. That's gotta be easy. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> I've been there before, so I know. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'm just a bad learner. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was a bad learner. I don't know about you, but, uh, college was... Okay. <laughs> it's easier than high school, I can say that oh, much. Yeah. They, they did a uh, high school if you fail you can attend again. Uh college if you fail you need to pay up money. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so that's the only difference. Yeah. <laughs> but at least I have to worry about like the social situations and all the close cuz I was in a school that didn't have very many people. It's in a small town and our school is completely combined. Um our elementary spans from our high school, and it's all in one building. So you don't not know anyone. So that's cool. So, At least everyone knows everyone. It's like that one sitcom show called... Sa- Saved by the uh, Bell? <laughs> I'm just trying to... Mm. Cheers! Yes. Oh, Where yeah. everybody knows your name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. But yeah, um, with voice acting, with hardwares and whatnot, it takes a lot of cash just to do anything. And with the project that you're currently doing now, eh, it's for the love of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, like, I'm doing it because I like to, you know, just, <laughs> I like a lot of the songs yeah. and I'd like to cover them and now I can combine the two yeah. things. Uh, how many songs have you covered now? Like, uh, is there any progressions? Um, I'm working on Like a Spinning Record, uh, by The Living Tombstone. Uh, planned on songs, um, include, uh, I think, um, I'm trying to think. Sinking Ships from the, uh, what is it? The Rainbow Dash Presents yeah, that, series that is good. one I have planned. That one's good too. I that, that, cannot really understand that one. one. I know. I literally just cannot understand that one. I need subtitles because I, have, okay. I I still don't know what the lyrics to that song is. Okay, okay. The world presents some problems, and we don't know. Wait, I'm just reading the lyrics. Um, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just link me the lyrics, man, because <laughs> they're spoken anyway. No, they're they're kind of sung. It's just weird. Um, let's see if I can find it. But yeah. Um, otherwise, I have. Uh, 
Beyond Her Garden out, titled Beyond Her Pasture, because eh, <laughs> I rate. So that's out of my SoundCloud currently. Uh, and otherwise, yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking of a list. Uh, I'm thinking of doing 20% Cooler for sure. Gosh, I'm trying to think. There's so many. Uh, I want to do Autumn, I think, by Griffin Village, or Jackal App. Anything that you want to do, maybe probably from uh, Mando Pony or even Black Griffin? I'm, I think, I'm thinking about loyalty. Oh, that one. That was a good one too. Yeah, that's, that's like the first time I heard of Mando Pony was from that song. And I think a lot of people did. Cause that's still revered to this day as one of like the really, really good pony songs. And I can understand that. There's a lot out there. I mean, um, if you look at how the pony songs progressed from, um, then till now, nothing can really beat the originals. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The one that came close that came on later on was uh uh that one where Luda singing to the children of the night. I can't think of the name yeah, of it. Lullaby for Princess. Yes, that one is amazing. Hmm. Whoever I man, that one is so good. And I think I might cover that one too, but I'm not completely sure. That'll be hard. Personally I love the uh the cover that uh it was a short cover but that animated James did. Oh, uh, because <laughs> because he, he basically weird owled that song. It's like fate has been cruel oh. in order unkind. How can I have sent you away? <laughs> yeah, it's just like <laughs> yeah. the, he, that's the Brony Polka he did. Like um, all, oh, let me see, all twenty four songs in nine minutes and thirteen seconds. I have it open right now, so that's what I know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, and uh, good old uh, Viva Riviera is trying to animate all of that. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh god. Oh man. God. Those two are like my favorite animators in this fandom. I'm sure I, well, I can't say that because there are more that I like. I, I just I um Oh yeah, you're right. I no, personally lo- I love how Flim Flam philosophy has just evolved his style over time. He's gone. Oh yeah. Time. I mean in, in like a year his style has just gone way up. I kind of miss the old one though, a little bit with like the Remedash Presents and stuff. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't Flim Flam Philosophy, that was done by another. Oh, yeah, artist. that's right. I done do by remember that. Some, somebody else, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, shows us what we know. Professionalism! Yay. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. not everybody knows everything off the top of their head. Like, I mean, do you remember, how, do you know how long the Great Wall of China is? Uh, 300, 500, 300, I was just gonna say a random number, but I tripped up on myself. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, see, see. Five, 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 uh, five. We have Google Foo for that. Yeah. Random facts, we just have Google for yeah. that. But talking about random numbers and whatnot, uh, did you guys know that a toy company called, uh, Integrity Toys is making a doll line featuring the ponies? Or inspired by the ponies. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, what do they look like? Well, if you guys click on the show notes, they... Oh, look... no. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. We mentioned this earlier on, but we had to save it for here. So, yeah, we can release all our opinions now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um... <laughs> One thing i seen about this is that these dolls are uh, 12 inch figures. Um, they're kind of limited and collectibles. And they look interesting. A price for one of them goes to $130. Holy moly. No. Wow. That hurts my head. <laughs> it's a collector's item. And, um, yeah. each of them, uh, only 500 available so yeah for a second there on the fluttershy one i thought that was a picture of applejack and i was very confused <laughs> like on the shirt oh yeah that one because like that that's like really not fluttershy colored at all it's not like bright yellow that's really orange maybe it's your monitor because i'm seeing yellow here oh uh, yeah it's probably my monitor then but like it's like applejack orange <laughs> on mine yeah uh, but honestly this this collection is really interesting. It's one of those limited edition toy things that regular people like you and me won't be able to buy. Because 
I already speak for yourself. I bought all of them already. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't have the time. Uh, if you did, it would be interesting. Man, not for my wallet. My wallet would be pretty mad at me. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But honestly, this looks interesting because... Uh, the toys, they're, well, they're dolls. They have articulation on their elbows, which kind of reminds me of one of those Japanese dolls where they have interchangeable parts where you can change their um, hands or put on accessories. And honestly speaking, I do like the Twilight and Fluttershy. I think one looks like he's a guy who's had a bit uh, too many. Parties, yes. He looks like someone would be at an Andrew WK concert. <laughs> you know, I think the Rainbow Dash would be with him on that. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the Rarity one just looks like, uh, he doesn't yeah, have time like, to be in the line. <laughs> and actually the, the Applejack one looks like he could just be a, we could just Photoshop him onto the brawny, uh, paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the Rarity one looks like a JoJo character. All he needs to do is to pose and there, you're done. Well, I bet someone will pose him, and what's his stand? His stand's a pony. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, so, uh, this looks cool. Um, in terms of dolls and toys, exclusive dolls and toys, this looks good. Only thing that bugs me is that there's only two female dolls and four male dolls. Like, what? Yeah. Why not just, why not just three and three? Yeah, I mean, like, the balance is off. Why? Hmm, maybe it's two guys, or three guys, two girls, and a rarity. <laughs> oh, fabulosity. I, yeah, I can buy that. I, I can't really, like, discern the rarity characters. Like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of confusing me a little bit. Oh, I, I don't know. But he looks, <laughs> he looks fabulous. Yes, regardless, fabulosity is certainly part of that character. Yep. But all in all, um, one thirty dollars each. Uh, if you have the cash, go ahead. If you're a collector, buy them today. Buy them all. <laughs> Yay! Oh God. Still. Uh, Sorry, uh, I need to make rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's this thing called living. I like. To Show your it. landlord the toy. He'll understand. My landlord. Um. <laughs> I don't. I, 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 I think we're about as exact as opposite as possible. Yeah. Oh, you want your rent? Take a look at this exclusive Twilight doll. Do you want the rent now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I can give you the doll. Uh, <laughs> does it count? No? But it's in mint, it's in mint condition. I haven't opened the box. Uh, I don't know. I was never that kind of person. I mean, come on. You always want to. Have fun with the stuff. You, you, it's like, yeah, buy something and then never use it. It's like buying an amiibo and never using it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people do that. Oh, true. Or buying something from Magic the Gathering and never opening it, just because they're expensive. But still, so Shade, is there anything else? Except, uh, except for that strange occurrence in the Silver Quill videos, <laughs> I don't really have anything else to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, uh, you you got to tell that story, man, because. Uh, <laughs> People are just confused, and I think everybody would love to know. Okay. Um, so I was watching, uh, before this, um, before coming on today, I, uh, I wanted to kind of review, uh, some of the episodes, cause I missed a, some chunks of a couple seasons, and I haven't really watched much of five or six, so I was like, okay, um, Silver Quill makes a good series of, uh, review videos, uh, I can just watch those and kind of get a gist of all the stories that I missed. So I go to watch it, and I get to, uh, Pinky Apple Pie's review. There's some shtick in there about a slender pony in the background. So when that scene comes up and uh he's talking about it being absurd and the slender pony appears, the screen goes to static and my computer froze. And it ended up freezing consecutively in the same part in the same video three times. Uh so I stopped watching videos for quite a while and I just kind of went into a corner and evaluated my life softly, hoping that nothing was behind me. <laughs> Oh, uh, you're in the corner by then. There's nothing behind you, you think? Besides, technically, if it was Slender Man, you wouldn't be able to know if he was there unless you were recording it because of, I think because, it'd be scary uh, if it was, uh, I think it'd be scary if it, quil if it was Quill <laughs> behind me. 
<laughs> oh, don't worry. I've 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 met the dude. He's a he's a lovable guy. Besides, I mean, he can't sneak up on you <laughs> until he kills you. Then he's not so lovable. Yeah, I'm sure he'll <laughs> kill you with love. I'll tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't kill anyone much. <laughs> oh god, but still, how? I don't understand it either, but it scares me. <laughs> I don't know if it'll happen if I look it up now, even. I hope it wouldn't, because that'd be way too scary. <laughs> I would like to uh, know, just, <laughs> just because. You know what, I'll, I'll pull it up. No, 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 we need you on. Okay, oh no, yeah, I'm just going to play in the back. Oh, wait, yeah, it would freeze, <laughs> never mind. Uh, oh boy. You got any question for Shutter here? What would you say is your biggest inspiration to become a musician as well? Like, uh, artists oh, man. or style. There's a lot of people, um, especially in the Brony community that have influenced me. Fuzogs is a big one because he, uh, he, he just works really hard on his music and for a time he even tried helping me learn some of the basics of, like, Ableton and stuff, which is really nice and he went out of his way to do that and I really appreciate him. I also appreciate a lot of just the general, uh, brony musician fan, like, the base of brony musicians, because, like, it's people like, uh, Tombstone and, and, uh, Mike and, oddly enough, Soul who, um, inspired me to just be like, take that creative route. And I'm actually aspiring to try doing music as a career with, uh, music education. So, that, yeah, I can credit a lot of the brony musicians for that. So you're taking music in college? Well, I'm, uh, right now I'm just doing general education stuff to get it out of the way. So when I do get to music, I can just do strictly music and I don't have to worry about any math or science or anything. Oh, yeah. Who uses that every day, right? Oh. Yeah. But yeah, um, if I, I just feel like if I can teach other people about music, my life will be way more, you know, meaningful. All right. I'll be looking forward to your album when it's out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Good luck to you on that. Thank you. So anyway, uh, I think that's about it. And thank you, Sheet, for coming on. It's been a blast. Yeah. So anyway, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also catch us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. You can also catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about, well, whatever you tickles my fancy. And Wills, where can they find you, man? You folks can find me at Willisin uh, on DeviantArt and Willisin on Tumblr and Willisin on Film Fiction. Where if you deign to see anything about my writings or deign to see anything about that I post or deign to see anything about my art. You haven't posted anything new in three months. Shut up. <laughs> hey, I did make a video on YouTube and it was dang good. I even broke my view count. I actually got 23 views. Yay! More than what this episode gets. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and oh, show the sheet. I'm sad. <laughs> and show the sheet. Where can people find you? You can. Oh. <laughs> um, I have a, I have a SoundCloud, I guess, and a, uh, I ha- I mean, I have a Tumblr, but I'm not gonna really talk about it too much, cause there's some questionable content um, on that Tumblr. Personal Tumblr then. So yeah. Yeah, um, but past that, you can find uh, Mecha Betty, the show I'm in, on SoundCloud, on YouTube. Just type in Mecha Betty in your browser. You'll, you're bound to find it. Otherwise, it's on Libsyn, mainly. Um, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N. But yeah, um, we're there, and we're waiting for your views. Thanks. <laughs> what about your SoundCloud? <laughs> it is Shershade, uh, hyphen one it looks like. And I uh, post either random things or things pertaining to the album there. All right. I'll put everything into the show notes, so we'll have a nice, clean, tidy link. All right. All right. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive.com. And also, please subscribe to the new SMBS show reviews. Over there, we have people like Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Songs, reviewing the latest episodes and comics, and in general, whatever we feel like talking about. Ever wanted to hear Silver Quill talk about video games? It's over there. Ever wanted to hear Sapphire Heart Song go insane because of how Silver Quill can scare people? Over there, too. Uh, Yeah, I can attest (laughs) to the scaring people. Yay. So please subscribe. Links will be in the show notes. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I have been Will. I'm that other guy. 
And we'll catch you guys next week for another amazing show. Catch you guys later. See ya. Bye. Yeah, bye. Oh, hey, Shutter uh, Shade. Yeah. Did you know? Yes, Who can I make did. your soul die <laughs> with a passing glance? Oh, Leave boy. a bunch of notes around and make you poop your pants. Why, it's the Slender Man. He's right behind you, the Slender Man can. Great, I'm really... Oh, great. Oh, there's static. That's the sound of static. Got my hand in the microphone. Oh, boy. I'm super nervous.